Good evening and welcome to the 2015 Good Scout Award Dinner. My name is Summer Smith and I am your Master of Ceremonies. We thank you so much for joining us tonight. The Good Scout Award is given each year to an individual to recognize their outstanding contributions in our community. This is the fifth annual event by the Manatee District of Southwest Florida Council. We want to thank our Boy Scout sponsors, Synovus Bank, Bells Incorporated, CSNL CPAs, Jeff Gilchrist, Landscaping Incorporated, and SunTrust Bank. This year we are honoring the Bradenton Kiwanis Club, and we'll be telling you a little bit more about the Kiwanis Club, who have given us so much and given to the community over the years. But before we do, we'd like to begin the evening with the presentation of the colors by Tony Cleaney, Scoutmaster of Troop 10, followed by the Pledge of Allegiance. Then we will have the invocation by Reverend India Dennis from the Palmasola Presbyterian Church. Good evening, if you could please rise for the presentation of the colors. Please join me as we pay homage to our country with the nation's pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Please be seated. Join me now in prayer. Oh God, your goodness is on display all around us in this beautiful environment in which we live here. And we give you our deepest thanks for the bounty that you have given us, both in the natural world, in the food that we are about to receive, and in the abundance of wonderful community leaders who serve and give, who train young men as scouts, and lead in other ways as Kiwanis members. We ask that this evening as we celebrate and honor those who have given so much, that your spirit and your presence would be with us, that we might rejoice in all of your gifts. Bless this food that we are about to receive, that we might use the energy it gives us to serve you and one another. In Jesus' name, amen. Your dinner is now being served, but we want to tell you a little bit about the program as everyone gets their dinners. This is the fifth time a Manatee County resident has been awarded the Good Scout Award. 
The past recipients include Dan Blaylock Jr., Coach Joe Canan, General Jerry Neff, and Pat Neal. Tonight, General Neff has joined us as we honor the Bradenton Kiwanis Club. General Neff, can you please stand for us? And thank you for coming tonight. We also have many elected and appointed officials in our audience. Could I ask all of you to please stand so we can recognize you for being here tonight? And thank you again for joining us tonight and everyone else who is in attendance this evening. We would like to thank our other sponsors tonight, Manatee Performing Arts Center, this beautiful building that we're in. Yes, big round of applause. Turvis, Tumblers, and the Bradenton Herald. Please enjoy your dinner. Round of applause. Again, please enjoy your dinner and during the reception and throughout this program, you are going to be entertained by Brooke Bonder. Brooke, by the way, earned the gold award from the Girl Scouts of America. Jimmy Kelman, Delaney Couch, and Solo Mat uh, Matalo and Michael Galvano, who is an Eagle Scout. And they are all from the Dell Couch Music Education Foundation. And these very talented young people are on their way to a possible career in music. Enjoy your dinner and program, and we will continue everything in just a few minutes. Besides building character, an important part of the scouting program is advancement and working toward becoming an Eagle Scout. On a poster in the room is a photo of the first Eagle Scout in Manatee County, Warren Saunders, who earned his Eagle Scout Award in 1929. Right over here. Tonight, I have the pleasure of introducing the most recent Eagle Scout in Manatee County. Alex Love, please stand, Alex, while we congratulate you on this accomplishment. Alex, I don't know if you know this, but you've become the 692nd Eagle Scout in Manatee County. But stand back up. We'd like Alex and all the other new Eagle Scouts, who are boys, We'd like you to stand and be recognized and please come up here to the podium. Uh-oh, we thought we had more than just Alex. <laughs> Alex, you might be our one and only, but we're very proud of you. If everyone could give Alex a round of applause. Oh, here we go. And I apologize. Michael Galvano is coming up too. He is an Eagle Scout also. Congratulations. We'll have you both up here. We'll have you stand down here so we can get a picture of you. We'll have you stand right, right here, sorry. Look at the camera. All right, great job. Thank you guys. Well, thank you for being here and supporting scouting. Now joining us tonight is Dominic DeMeo, President of Southwest Florida Council, and he's here to share a few words about the mission of the Boy Scouts of America. Dominic, if you'll please join us. See ya. Thank you, Summer. I first wanted to say a couple um, thank yous. Uh, thank you to our honoree, the Kiwanis, for hosting us as well, but also being such a great uh, community involvement group, giving time and energy back into, into the Bradenton area. Uh, I want to thank those supporters of Camp Flying Eagle and the Boy Scouts here in Bradenton and Manatee County um, and, and the people that came tonight because without you, we wouldn't be able to be here. So thank you. Um, you know, the Kiwanis Mission is a global organization of volunteers dedicated to improving the world, one child and one community at a time. When you think about the their, their mission, it's very similar to the BSA mission, to prepare young people to make ethical and moral choices over their lifetime based on the values of the, of the Scout Oath and Scout Law. 
You know, in business, as a leader, we use such words as vision, passion, and charisma. The scouts use 12 words, trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obe obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. You know, business leaders across the country are saying that they need employees with technical skills, but increasingly, increasingly are saying equally as important, they need skills that can't be found in an application that we download on our phone or some software package that we buy from a company. We need skills like teamwork, leadership, goal setting, critical thinking, and communication skills, especially at work. Although scouting has been around for 105 years, the fundamentals of the program have remained intact. Yet, we have adapted the program to include a few new things. You know, we still teach the boys how to navigate through the woods using a compass. Most of them have a GPS in their backpack as well. <laughs> so, we added some merit badges. As you know, the boys and some of the boys you saw tonight had merit badge sashes. We added geocaching, GPS, robotics, animation, game design, and composite materials. Trying to keep up with what's going on around us and not being closed-minded to, to the society as it changes. You know, scouting is relevant. If you believe it's relevant, then you would believe school success is important. That workforce preparedness is important. That personal responsibility is important. Taking responsibility for your actions makes you accountable. And we want our boys to be relevant. Southwest Florida, the council, I'm newly president now, so it's my first time in front of anyone, <laughs> um, impacts 21,000 youth and 3,000 volunteers. Thank you to all the volunteers that you, for giving the time that you give to scouting. Without you, we wouldn't be able to do and run the movement in the program. 90% of our budget goes to the, that are donated and, and goes, to, goes back into our program. 99% of it is self-developed and self-generated. So it's vital when we have this kind of a, 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 an evening and evenings that we do in other areas as well that we get the support we've got tonight. So I want to thank you for that support. You know, stewardship is one of the things that I always look at when I'm, do, when I'm giving money from a corporate level into an organization. And that stewardship and confidence that you have that that organization is using your dollars importantly or, or properly is very important. Southwest Florida Council, I'm happy to say, is one of two councils out of the nine councils who have used their money properly and for the last five consecutive years has been in the black. And, and not needing to delve into funds that they have set aside or you know, debt as some councils have had to do. The dollars are managed well by our staff, but also by the volunteers who give time and energy and write checks every year as well themselves just to be involved with a, gr a group like the Scouts. So I want to end in, in thanking you. Uh, the judge told me I had three minutes, so I'm, I know I'm over. <laughs> but I thought some of the things that, I had, had, that we had prepared had to be said. So thank you for your time tonight. Thank you, Dominic, for reminding all of us why the Boy Scouts of America program is so important for boys. You did a great job. Thank you. <laughs> now we'd like to tell you a little bit more about tonight's honoree, the Bradenton Kiwanis Club. We have a video presentation we'll be showing you, so let's take a look.
Boy Scouts of America program began in 1910 in Southwest Florida and trained young boys into becoming men by teaching them the principles of duty to God and country, duty to others, and duty to self. In 2010, the Good Scout Award began in the Manatee District to recognize individuals who have rendered outstanding service to their community, state, or nation. The award distinguishes those who go above and beyond superior expectations to serve others. It celebrates those who truly make a difference, not only because they care, but because they act. This year, Manatee District Southwest Florida Council honors not one leader, but a group of leaders who are members of the Bradenton Kiwanis Club, who not only individually, but as a club exemplify the spirit of the Scout Oath and Law by helping others and setting an example for all of us. In the early 1900s, the town of Bradentown was a peaceful town on the Manatee River. It had become the county seat and center of commerce in the region. As families moved in, they found the town to be family friendly. As the community grew, there was a need for citizens to volunteer their time to their community and the youth. Volunteering was not just a good thing to do, it was a necessity. Responsible citizens began programs to benefit the youth, including the Boy Scouts of America, in 1910. In August 1914, in Detroit, Michigan, Alan S. Brown, a professional organizer, and Joseph G. Prance, a tailor, came up with an idea to develop an organization for fellowship and business networking. The name Nukiwanis is an Indian name meaning, we trade. From that name, Brown adopted the name Kiwanis as the name of the organization and clubs were established in Detroit and Cleveland, Ohio. In Cleveland, the club began a nursery school which set out the mission of Kiwanis to have a special concern for children. In the next few years, Kiwanis clubs were established all over the country. On June 18, 1919, the Tampa Kiwanis Club was established with W.M. Rowlett as the president. One day, W.M. was talking with his brother, C.A. Rowlett, about his club and bragging about the benefits to the community. W.M. offered to have the Tampa Kiwanis Club sponsor a new club in Bradenton, if there was any interest. C.A. arranged a meeting with other leaders in Manatee County who were already volunteering their time in the community and for children. That group included William A. Manning, Elon Rood, M. O. Thomas, R. M. Bell, Whitney Curry, John T. Campbell, Dewey A. Dye, E. P. Green, Sr., W. L. Kimball, W. V. Lathrop, W. P. Kirby, G. P. Smythe, John Pope Harley, William T. Harrison, and James A. Howes. After hours of discussion, the group unanimously agreed to form a Kiwanis Club in Bradenton to be sponsored by the Tampa Kiwanis Club. On August 22, 1922, the Manatee River Kiwanis Club was chartered by Kiwanis International. What an exciting time! The original members really did not know the potential of the club. From the beginning, the Manatee River Kiwanis Club attracted the most successful, politically savvy, and civic-minded men in Manatee County. The members held a celebration at the Bradenton Women's Club on September 15, 1922 to introduce themselves to the community. Over a fine chicken supper, there were speeches and toasts as the new club set off to serve the community. The club came to have weekly meetings on every Tuesday. The first regular meeting was on Tuesday, September 26, 1922, at the Juplinor Hotel. The first slate of officers elected included H.K. Kick Talent as President, W.L. Kimball as Vice President, Dewey A. Dye as Secretary, and Directors P.J. Cross, A.H. Flowers, F. Emery Sharp, E.P. Green, Jr., H.P. Perry, J.P. Harley, and John B. Singletary. From the very first meeting, the club began raising money for programs benefiting children. 
at the First Ladies' Night in December 1922, which included the re-election of H.K. Talon as president and other officers, and entertainment by a quartet including Cliff Earnshaw and W.A. Manning, money was raised for a Christmas charity to go to underprivileged children living in Manatee County. By 1923, the club became more active in civic and governmental affairs, which only helped the club fulfill its mission for children. Throughout its life, the focus of the club centered on the service to the children of the community. Since the first Christmas project celebrated by the club, members have developed programs or contributed money or labor or both towards programs for children. A few specific projects include, in 1929, the club raised funds and built three cabins for the Boy Scouts at Camp Flying Eagle and continued supporting the Scouts. In 1930, the club began a program for children called the Kiwanis Health Summer Camp, which was held on the banks of Manatee River and continued for many years. In 1940, the club sponsored a new club at Bradenton High School called the Key Club. In 1945, the club established and provided funding for a new program called the Boys Club of Manatee County. In 1947, the club organized the Happiness House. In 1950, the club provided funding for the Girl Scouts and to build the Little Girl Scout House on 17th Avenue West. In 1953, the club sponsors the Negro Youth Center and provides funding for the construction of the building. In 1975, the club constructed a building for 4-H. In 1992, the club buys a van for Head Start. In 1993, the club sponsors the Kids Fishing Festival. In 2010, the club establishes Christmas in August for the children in Manatee County. At the same time the club was establishing programs for children, it also provided support for many projects which would not have happened without the support from the Bradenton Kiwanis Club. In 1923, the club was formed and it sponsored a conference in Bradenton between Bradenton and Arcadia Kiwanians and Manatee and DeSoto County Commissioners to plan for a paved road between Bradenton and Arcadia. In 1948, the club built the Manatee Garden Club located on the west side of Lewis Park. In 1949, funding was provided for Veterans Hospital, which would later become Manatee Memorial Hospital. During World War II, war bonds were purchased to help the troops. In 1978, $500,000 was donated as seed money for the new Manatee Civic Center. In 1979, the club established Better Manatee Day during which its members go out annually one day to perform labor for different organizations or locations for the benefit of the public. In 1983, the club joins the Manatee County Chamber of Commerce in creating Leadership Manatee. In 1984, property on 14th Street and 17th Avenue was purchased by the organization for the Manatee County United Way office. In 1986, the inaugural Kiwanis Prayer Breakfast took place. Then in 1992, the club hosted the Stag Bowl, held at Hawkins Stadium at Manatee High School. In 2000, the club started American Patriotism Week to support the United States of America. In 2005, funding was provided for a three-year grant to launch the College and Career Resource Center at Manatee High School. And throughout its life, the club has also sponsored other Kiwanis clubs all over Manatee County. The Bradenton Kiwanis Club was able to do all these things by the generosity of its members and with ingenuity. Whether by sheer genius or just hard work, the original leaders of the club created a funding source for itself and restored the economy in Manatee County by taking on a huge project. During the Great Depression, leaders with the Bradenton Chamber of Commerce were looking for ways to boost the economy in Manatee County. Tourism was the answer with the natural resources of the area. They proposed to the city of Bradenton that the city build a trailer park to attract tourists to the area. The city owned vacant land on 14th Street, not far from downtown. But the city declined, stating that the city was not able to take on such a large project. The leaders in the Bradenton Chamber of Commerce then approached the Bradenton Kiwanis Club. 
they had the leadership and talent to consider a venture of this scope, but did they have the fortitude to take it on? The members were also all businessmen who found themselves challenged by the economy. After several meetings, the leaders were interested. The president at the time was Dan Blaylock, a successful real estate broker. He appointed a committee chaired by Robert M. Bell, the talented retailer, to study the project and begin a series of meetings. After months of planning, the club agreed to take on this enterprise. The club leased the city land from the city of Bradenton for the installation of the trailer park. The agreement was for the city of Bradenton to receive 25% of the net profits. A total of $17,000 was raised through Kiwanis, merchants, and businessmen to start construction of the park. The funds were raised, backed by bonds, and in 1936, construction started and 200 spaces measuring 20 feet by 30 feet were completed along with two showers and wash houses. The lot rent was $1.50 per week. Not only was the club successful in completing the Bradenton Trailer Park, it filled the park with residents in no time, and the city of Bradenton and the club received its profits each year. Later, the park was improved, a new auditorium was completed, and in 1963, it was dedicated to the man who headed up the project, Robert M. Bell. In 1972, the club had an anniversary celebration that the mortgage and notes to acquire the Braden Trailer Park had been satisfied to the lender. In 1997, the trailer park was sold to park residents and the proceeds from sale were turned over to the club's foundation. Prior to 1952, the club held its meetings at different venues in the city of Bradenton, the last one being the Tea Cozy Restaurant. But in 1952, the club took the initiative to build its own Kiwanis Hall on the corner of 14th Street and 17th Avenue West, next to the Bradenton Trailer Park. For over 50 years, the club meetings took place at Kiwanis Hall with a variety of special guests. But in 2008, an opportunity came to the club while it was considering a move from its old location at Kiwanis Hall. Throughout the years, the club has given financial gifts to the Manatee players. However, the construction of the new Manatee Performing Arts Building provided the members another way to contribute to the community and to build a new location for its meetings. With an additional $1.1 million contribution to Manatee Players Performing Arts Center, the club acquired a room on the second floor as the new Kiwanis Hall. In 2013, the club held its first meeting in this new and exciting location. From its beginning, Kiwanis was an organization for men only. But as times changed, so did Kiwanis's policy. In 1987, after Kiwanis International changed its policy, the club opened membership in Kiwanis clubs to women. In 1994, the Bradenton Kiwanis Club welcomed its first female member, Dr. Gladys Brannick. Then, in the year 2000, Julie Ross became the club's first female president followed in 2004 by Connie Shingledecker and Brenda Rogers in 2005 and 2011 respectively. Since the club's inception, grants and scholarships have totaled in the millions of dollars. In fact, just since 1994, $6,486,864 have been donated to local community organizations. Shown here are just some of those that have benefited from donations over the years. Kiwanians are volunteers changing the world through service to children and communities. Kiwanis members help shelter the homeless, feed the hungry, mentor the disadvantaged, and care for the sick. They develop youth as leaders, build playgrounds, raise funds for pediatric research, and much more. 
no problem is too big or too small. Why? Because working together, members achieve what one person cannot accomplish alone. When you give a child a chance to learn, experience, dream, and succeed, great things happen. Congratulations to all members of the Braden and Kiwanis Club upon receiving the 2015 Good Scout Award. Sorry, there was a little pause. That was a great video, wasn't it? So what exactly is the Good Scout Award? Well, to better explain that, I'd like to invite Judge Smith, the chairman of the Manatee District, up to the podium. Judge Smith, will you uh, come and join us? Good evening, everybody. The Good Scout Award is given to recognize an individual or an organization in the community who has shown extraordinary service over his or its organization's lifetime. The award given to our honoree this year is a statuette, which is a small replica of the famous original called the Ideal Boy Scout, sculpted by Dr. R. Tate McKenzie. Dr. McKenzie was a surgeon, physical educator, artist, sculptor, and he was also a personal friend of Lord Baden-Powell, the founder of scouting. When asked in 1914 to create something tangible that would be a symbol of what scouting stood for, Dr. McKenzie sculpted his beloved statue portraying the ideal Boy Scout. The, the sculptor, a longtime scouter himself, portrayed this statue in the grand traits of what the character he knew the Boy Scout movement to be. To Dr. McKenzie, the uncovered head represented reverence and obedience. The axe on which the hand rests was a symbol of George Washington's truthfulness. And later, this statue was redone, life-size, a copy of which now stands in the National Boy Scout office in Irving, Texas. Judge Nicholas, my friend, my colleague, and the president of Bradenton Kiwanis Club, would you please join me on stage? <laughs> in presenting the Bradenton Kiwanis Club with this award, the Manatee District of the Southwest Florida Council Boy Scouts of America and this community recognizes the club's dedication to the service of others. Congratulations. Good evening. As Judge, Smith, as Judge Smith told you, my name is Ed Nicholas. And how fortunate am I to happen to be president of the Bradenton Kiwanis Club this year that my club is honored with this most prestigious award. How fortunate am I to have been able to join the list of all the amazing men and women who have preceded me as president of Bradenton Kiwanis. And how fortunate am I to accept this wonderful honor on behalf of our club. Thank you, Boy Scouts, particularly the Southwest Council. Thank you to my friend Gilbert Smith. Thank you, Jim Thielen. Maureen Renicky, Ed Jenowick, Bill Lawrence, Red Dog Maynard, love that name, Red Dog Maynard, <laughs> Mac Aldrich, Rob Cuthbert, and Rod Urban, and all the other people who contributed, contributed to this amazing night and who assisted in this most appreciated award. I was not a Boy Scout, I have to confess. My older brothers were, and I remember fondly my younger brother and I tagging along with them out at Camp Flying Eagle, 
going on campouts, playing capture the flag, canoeing, fishing, hiking, telling ghost stories around the campfire. Who stole my golden arm? Who stole my golden arm? Come on, that's a classic. <laughs> you see, my brother's scout leader, Mr. Bianco, was a neighbor and a great man. He was the epitome of a good scout leader. He let me and my younger brother tag along and do all the awesome things that my older brothers and the other scout members did out at Camp Flying Eagle. I was about six or seven years old. Of course, I didn't know at the time that Mr. Bianco was a great man. I didn't know that he was being such a positive role model for me and my brothers. I didn't know the amount of time that he put in to making the amazing campouts possible for me, my brothers, and the other scouts. All I knew was that he let me tag along. But what did Mr. Bianco knew? He knew that I didn't have a dad. He knew that my dad died when I was two leaving my mother a widow. He knew that my mother was pregnant with my younger brother. You know, I've told this a lot of times. <laughs> he knew that my mother was pregnant with my younger brother at the time. When my father died suddenly of a heart attack, leaving her with six kids to raise alone. Five boys and one girl. So what did Mr. Bianco know? He knew that my mom could use some help. He knew that she could use an occasional break. He knew that her five boys could use a positive role model in their lives. He was a great man. I want to pay tribute to Mr. Bianco and all the other scout leaders out there who do so much, who give so much, who are such great men. Let's hear it for the Boy Scout leaders. <laughs> Braden Quanis does indeed have a long history of service to Manatee County and a long history with the Scouts. Incidentally, Bradenton Kiwanis will be out at Camp Flying Eagle next Saturday for our Better Manatee Day. We've given the Scouts $15,000 for supplies and materials, but we could use all the help we can get out there. So feel free to join us, and please feel free to spread the word. It's truly been a pleasure to be present at Braden to Qantas this year. Frankly, we don't toot our own horn very much. We do a lot under the radar. I think that's what makes this recognition so special. You know, this morning I saw an article about the Peace River Co-op donating $25,000 to a local nonprofit, and I thought how wonderful that is. But this year alone, the Braden and Kiwanis Club gave $40,000 to the Boys and Girls Club to buy a new van. We gave $50,000 to the Turning Points to house a dental unit for the homeless. We will give out $45,000 in scholarships to needy students, provided $27,000 to local key clubs, builders clubs, and key clubs. We'll spend $35,000 on our annual Christmas in August project to help homeless kids get ready for school, provide $10,000 to the 4-H program, the list goes on and on. This year alone, Bradenton Kiwanis will give out to the community $450,000. As you heard, since 1994, we've given out over $6.5 million, which includes over $2 million in scholarships. I'm fairly sure that those wise community leaders 
who gambled on creating a trailer park back in the early 1930s had no idea what impact they would have on the less fortunate in Manatee County for generations to come. As I said, I think that's what makes this award so special. Bradenton Kiwanis doesn't toot its own horn very well. Thank you, Scouts, for doing so. Thank you for recognizing our humble club. Thank you for awarding it, us, us this most treasured honor. Thank you. Thank you very much. Wow, I work in the media and I had no idea you did all of that, the Qantas Club. You're an amazing group and thank you so much for all you do for this community. Very impressed. And you should toot your own horn. It's amazing. I'm here, so I'm taking note. I'm going to toot your horn. <laughs> there you go. Judge Nicholas and members of the Brayden Qantas Club, congratulations on receiving the 2015 Good Scout Award. You guys really deserved it. Congratulations. It's always important to recognize those individuals and organizations that do so much for our community. And I always say you cannot be successful without giving back. So this is a prime example. Thank you, Judge Nicholas and the members of the Brighton and Kiwanis Club for what you do. Your hard work and de dedication to this community is truly appreciated. And we can only hope other business leaders will do the same. And thanks to all of you for attending the event tonight and supporting the scouting. We are finished with the program, however, we do have musicians from the Dell Couch Music Foundation who will be performing now, including Eagle Scout Michael Galvano, so please stay to listen to the talented musicians. And participants and guests who are interested in staying may talk with Judge Nicholas and members of the Qantas Club, and you can have photos taken with them. Did you know that? Okay. <laughs> You're staying. Musicians from the Dell Couch Music Foundation may now perform for the rest of the evening, and they were wonderful. So again, a round of applause for tonight's event. Thank you very much, and Judge Smith, who put this on, you did a wonderful job, as always. Thank you. Have a good night. <laughs>